We stay at the top of the second division now for our last game today and what a crazy season it's been for Watford. Next week they face Arsenal in the sixth round of the FA Cup but their visit yesterday to promotion chasers Newcastle was obviously just as important to them because Watford have been desperately close to the relegation area all season and need a big push now to make sure of staying in the second division. The pictures are from Ty and T's television, the commentator is Roger Thames, Newcastle are in the stripes. Ray Train. Jenkins, train again. Still haven't cleared it. Blissett. Henderson's overlapping. Jenkins. Again, that was Jenkins may well hold his head in despair. Henderson overlapped well, and then his cross was true. Jenkins used his height, and Steve Hardwick just got a touch to it to keep it out of his goal. <laughs> Rostrum taking them on for pace and beating them. Poskett! Bliss it! And it's an own goal by David Barton! A disaster for him, a disaster for Newcastle. But really, they've only themselves to blame for the way they opened up for Watford then. Poskett could have scored. Blissett finally blasted the ball back into the box and David Barton came herring through and turned it into the back of his own net. Rostrum now sprinting away, Jenkins in the space outside of him. Jenkins with the cross. Foskett knocks it back, miss it, this could be dangerous. Blissett hesitated then, and that split second gave Steve Hardwick the chance to come out and deflect his shot when he got it in eventually over the bar. Everything that Newcastle are not neat, methodical, organised, accurate. There's a lot of hope about Newcastle's play at the moment. And unfortunately for them, it's not really on a solid enough foundation. Trained with the corner. Tall man does it then. Ray Train with the corner. Jenkins got up miles to the highest, a little flick, and Steve Hardwick was left stranded. And really, that must be curtains for Newcastle. Boom. Hibbit. Still the Terry Hibbit. Nobody gets on the end of it. It must have been a slight touch off a defender. That's a corner. Shoulder. With battling for it. Still there. Barton was it over the line. Play on, says the referee. As the ball bobbled about then in the air, uh, David Barton it was who got a header to it, and Steele it was managed to flick it back from out of his goal and appeals there that it had already crossed the line, but the referee who was extremely well positioned, wave play on. 
Great result for Watford, one that did Newcastle's promotion chances no good at all there. Chelsea get back to top place after their victory yesterday. And in fact, it's Leicester and Newcastle, the two teams that are wobbling most of all now. But what a battle for those three promotion places from the second division. But let us make a start then at Watford, who had climbed to second place in the table behind neighbours Luton on goal difference, now at home against Norwich City, fresh down from the First Division. And Norwich come with someone who provides a reminder of those First Division days. He looks like Justin Fashionu, and in fact, he's Justin's 19-year-old brother, John, who today makes his first full league appearance for Norwich City after coming on as a substitute amid much acclaim last Saturday. But Watford also have this young man who's exciting the crowds, 17-year-old winger John Barnes from Sudbury Court, recommended to the club by a Watford supporter. Some recommendation that is turning out to be. Watford, incidentally, encouraging families in this special enclosure here in front of the main stand. No one else is allowed in. There are lollipops for youngsters, birthday cards for them on their big day, and really that's an enterprise that deserves success. It plays it in once more. Barnes. And the ball coming off Simmons. Jacket crossing it in deep towards Ross Jenkins. Back again it goes. And somehow Norwich kept it out as Blissett came in. And again it was good defensive work by Steve Walford. So Taylor again with the Watford point. And a off the line that time. The header coming from Terry. I think it was Simmons who got it away, and now Hoagley who gets it away for Norwich City. Well, Norwich under all sorts of pressure there, and a really good firm downward head of that by uh, Steve Terry. And headed away. He certainly stopped the Watford player in his stride, and here's Pritchett with the free kick, floated there towards Ross Jenkins again. Jackets, hit the crossbar, Blissett puts it over. Well, Kenny Jackets came so close to giving Watford what at the moment would certainly be a deserved lead. Hit on the volley first time, against the crossbar with Woods beaten, and uh, Blissett not causing any problems for the keeper after that. Uh, Callaghan showing that he's a lad with skill and he's got determination as well and quite a shot too which called for an excellent save by Chris Woods. Barnes. This is shoved in the back by Holby there I think and the free kick already taken leaving a bit of space here for Les Taylor. And now for Callaghan on the far side with Bolton going up outside it. Here's Ian Bolton in a chance for Watford now. And a beautiful goal! Scored by Ian Bolton. And all coming from a free kick that was quickly taken and never really gave uh, Norwich City a chance to get back into the game. Callaghan playing his part. What a run it was here by uh, Ian Bolton. And a shot beating Woods at the near post. So, uh, Elton John, the chairman, and on the right, Bertie Mee, the assistant manager, with something to smile about. Bridget. This is on the far side! <laughs> 
Tim will be a little annoyed that he didn't make that one count. It was a lovely cross in there. Flying in there was Luther Blissett. But again, just wide of that one, that Norwich post. So Watford at the moment in a really rampant mood. And running in by Barnes. 2-0. And John Barnes, the 17-year-old, gets his fourth goal of the season with that little nod in from the far post. Flicked on there by Ross Jenkins. And a formality for the 17-year-old. Free kick to Watford. They certainly need to stiffen up their resolve in this second half, particularly in the midfield areas. Donaghy playing the ball forward. Bolton winning it. Taylor, who's a real little dynamo in the midfield for Watford. He is again number four on the ball, but this time beaten by Maguire. And Jacket finding Jenkins. Taylor again right in there. This time Barnes is offside. But the play has gone on, and the ball has gone in the net. But the linesman is a way, way back, holding his leg aloft, and you can see that Chris Woods is saying to the referee, go and have a word with the linesman, for goodness sake. But it's the final word of the referee that counts. Now, what's he going to give, a goal or a free kick? Well, a free kick is good. But Bolton can pick up the pieces for Watford. Barnes. Well, he showed that to Donaghy. Oh, my goodness! And he might almost have made a goal there for Callaghan, if not for himself. Callaghan crossing it in, Taylor in there, Woods not knowing where it is, but finally it goes behind, and it's a goal kick. What a cheeky bit of play, though, in the first place by John Barnes. Actually showing the ball to Donaghy, letting him flay at it, and then taking it away. The shot, which Woods couldn't hold, Callaghan almost got onto. And in the end, Taylor couldn't quite finish it off. And certainly on the big match earlier this season, we've seen how it succeeded for them in a game at Luton, where they line up one wall immediately behind the ball. And that looks to be what the plan is now. Four in that wall. Ian Bolton is the man who normally strikes them. Barnes is there also. It doesn't give the Norwich wall or the goalkeeper much of a chance. Barnes floating against the post. And Blissett getting the ball in for the third goal. And so the famous free kick strikes again. Although not quite the way maybe that Norwich intended. Barnes floating it superbly against the crossbar. Blissett with the header. And Woods couldn't quite stop it. So Watford, not always at the top, but today they were always on top. And, of course, they keep challenging there in their bid to get into the first division. Well, the top of the second division unchanged because while Watford were winning so impressively there, Luton were doing likewise away to Wrexham, with Sheffield Wednesday going third after beating Oldham. Well, there's no disputing who were the two happiest men at Vicarage Road in Watford yesterday. Chairman Elton John and uh, manager Graham Taylor. Elton, you've, you've flown in, I think, from Paris for this. They're almost sort of day trips, aren't you? They're living, living in Paris and coming across for the game. Well, I'm sort of commuting because I'm in the middle of maybe one or two albums, uh, and I try and get back for as many games as possible in between recording schedules. And uh, it's always nice to come back to the club anyway, but when we play like that, it's even doubly nice. But uh, it's important for me to, back, to be back at the club as much as possible. And certainly the young players today did superbly well. I mean, you think of Kenny Jackett and you think mm. of Steve <laughs> Terry, and people will think of Nigel Callaghan, but I think most people who watched it today will think of the other lad, the 17-year-old John Barnes. Yeah. Tell me in the first place, Graham, how did he come to join the club? Well, you know, you get your stroke of good fortune, and uh, a supporter, in fact, phoned up the club and said that a friend of his had seen a young boy that he thought was well worth watching. We went and watched him, um, we saw him, we gave him half a game, <laughs> we hid him <laughs> and signed him <laughs> as quickly as we could. You don't need to be an expert, you see. Uh, people turn around and say, uh, well, look at that, how did they get him? You don't need to be an expert, you see it, you get it, you don't mess about it. Yes, tell me about this now. Well, he has an awareness, he has a touch on the ball, he knows what he's doing, got a little bit of a break but reacts quickly and then sees people, sees people there, just yeah. gets that little bit extra. 
Uh, and he'll be talking to Les Taylor about that. <laughs> <laughs> there was a moment too where where Willie Donaghy, who's a very experienced Scottish international player, comes out to shadow him here, and he shows him the ball, and then Back just takes it goes. away from him. Yes. Well, we always ask him to at least give us one of those during a game. Uh, he gets into trouble if he doesn't actually give us a soul of the foot movement, and I'm quite serious about that. Yes, we always ask him where his sole of the foot movement was in this particular game. Now, that's the balance that we're trying to achieve because there's other things as well. Yes, they're clearly a club that are getting so many things right. And it all added up to a tough day for Norwich. Quite apart from the skills factor, it seemed to me that they were swamped by the sheer enthusiasm and the controlled aggression shown by Watford. Although Watford also counted the cost, at least two of their players did. You saw the blooded face of 19-year-old defender Steve Terry. He looks a great prospect. A clash of heads that, it needed 11 stitches in that wound over the eye. And Ross Jenkins, who was injured in the first half, well, Ross needed four in his eye wound. Last match today is Watford against Everton. We've already sampled the emotion in Newcastle today, but in its way, the day was just as important to Watford as they made their first appearance in the top division. And for the fans, it couldn't have been a better day to watch football at Vicarage Road. So Watford step out for the first time in their history as a first division club. And to think that only five years ago, they were in the fourth division. It's one of the most astonishing success stories in the history of the Football League. A day really of great celebration here at Vicarage Road. And here, in fact, is the Watford lineup. They bought no first team players during the summer. They believe that the balance is right, that their young players can only prosper in the first division. Although, of course, Steve Sherwood, Pat Rice, Wilf Rostron, Jerry Armstrong, and Ross Jenkins have all got first division experience with other clubs. And the good times continue for Jerry Armstrong. A hero for Northern Ireland in the World Cup in Spain, and now he's in the Watford side today, helped a little by the fact that Les Taylor is not quite match fit and is the side. As for Everton, manager Howard Kendall had one or two fitness problems to be solved, but he names a full-strength side. Andy King is having his second spell with them, and they include two players who've moved over from Liverpool this summer, David Johnson and Kevin Sheedy. Jenkins, Armstrong and Blissett has come up from the back as well. So they'll be the three that they're laying for us. Callaghan floats it in there. Ross Jenkins going all the way. And Armstrong has scored. No. Oh, yes, he has. It's been given. And Watford's first goal in the first division comes after 21 minutes. The big broad spiral from the Irishman, Jerry Armstrong. off in Spain, puts Watford in the lead. Nicely taken by Jerry Armstrong. Arm sent crashing in his effort to get forward. He'll find Callaghan. Oh, good control by Callaghan. And his shot is a good one! And he was very unlucky there. Now Jenkins, can he turn this back? The little dip cross coming in, and that time Callaghan couldn't quite finish it off, but he came so close. He really took charge of that situation so well, took all the responsibility in the world, and it was a shot that deceived Neville Southall and came so close to making it 2-0. Having seen the opportunity, he didn't hesitate for a moment. Bang from way outside the box, past the keeper. I think he must have come off the post. Certainly got a good squad at Goodison Park. Like right, Kevin Ratcliffe and uh, Trevor Ross not in the side. This is Trevor Ross on the left of the picture there. Former Arsenal man. Yes, it is. Here's a Watford free kick. And Southall. And a goal given. Pat Rice has 
has scored an astonishing second goal. The first he's ever scored for Watford. Neville Southall can't believe it, but the linesman on the far side flagged to the centre. The referee agreed, and the goal was given. Pat Rice is the scorer. The Everton keeper is complaining still. His first ever goal for Watford, and he gets it on the very first day in the first division. Well, Southall can't believe it. I must say, he did seem to step back a fair way. There's Pat Rice. What an astonishing goal. And Southall back off his line. Well, it's almost impossible to say from that angle. There's the appeal from the Watford player. And I can tell you that the linesman was right up against the corner flag and gave it a goal. Now Johnson. And Sheedy. Good shot there. Oh, and a tremendous save by Sherwood from McMahon. The first real genuine save that Steve Sherwood's had to make. McMahon hit it well, and Sherwood did extremely well. So a good start in the first division for Watford. Everton, sad to say, were a complete disappointment. But what about that remarkable goal by Pat Rice? And do you know he didn't even see it? run up to take the free kick. I seen Ross Jenkins and Jerry Armstrong on the far post. And uh, the boss likes uh, the crosses to be hit in with pace. So I was more concentrating on uh, sort of way pinging the, the, the ball into Ross and to uh, Jerry. And of course, I've come off it and I've sliced it. And I've just turned, uh, turned away and, you know, like absolutely sick. And all of a sudden, I heard all of the crowd shouting and I turned around and the referee had given a goal. And I, you know, I saw naturally, like uh, modest as I am, I just turned around and, just acknowledge the crowd yeah. <laughs> after a long time. Yeah. So it was your first goal for the club in competitive games, and you didn't even see it go in the net? No. No, I didn't. No. Uh, the, the only other goals I've scored is OGs, <laughs> you know, which is, uh, which is something that the boys rubbed me up with. But uh, I was very, very pleased with it. Watford lying second this morning were at Arsenal, and that produced some dramatic football. And you just can't argue with a side that are second in the league in their first ever season in the first division. But now Robson again. And a great save by Sherwood. George Best is back from another playing trip to Hong Kong, and he'll be telling us what he thinks about the title challenges. But on now with the action, it's Arsenal against Watford, with Watford lying second this morning, four points behind Liverpool. The cameras of London Weekend Television were at Highbury. The commentator, Brian Moore. Pat Rice spent 16 years with Arsenal and won most of the things worth winning. Two years ago this month, he moved to Watford and has played a huge part in that continuing success story there. A great reception he's getting here at Highbury. And here, in fact, is the Watford side that he plays in today. It shows one change. Ross Jenkins returns to lead the attack after missing two games to injury. And young David Johnson will be the substitute. Arsenal, meanwhile, are unchanged. Tony Woodcock and Stuart Robson have both recovered from injuries. They received in their 3-0 win over Everton in the Mill Cup on Tuesday and Lee Chapman is again on the substitutes bench. Straight for Carlo. No foul. Callaghan just couldn't get free of White, and the cross coming in, and Bolton there, and it might be anybody's touch, and Sunderland back heeled it in, but the whistle had gone. O'Leary a little unhappy with the decision, feeling that there was no foul by him. Steve Sherwood, I thought, holding his face there for a moment as though he'd caught something in the face. The cross came in, and it was a deep one. Bolton got the touch there. Now, it didn't seem to be such a foul on the goalkeeper, to be fair. Ricks. Good pop. That's a Sims. And Woodcock getting it through there. Fabulous goal there. And Stuart Rostron, Robson, hits the most marvellous goal for Arsenal. Woodcock on the turn, beating Sims. And Cork superbly and giving Sherwood no chance. Well, reaching Woodcock. 
and he got tangled up. Some ball there by O'Leary. Lincoln's beating O'Leary that time, though. Played on now for Barnes. And he's made it 1 1. So John Barnes makes it 1 1. A long, long clearance from Steve Sherwood. And O'Leary was beaten in the air by Jenkins, touched on there by Blissett to Barnes. And the ball came off the defender, but will be certainly credited to the 18-year-old winger, John Barnes. Shot by Jacket! And in it goes. Well, it was deflected along the way, but you won't convince Penny Jacket that it's anybody's goal other than his. Well, O'Shea jumping, and it's just knocked on there by Barnes. There's Jacket shot and deflected wide of George Wood. Nice. Halligan. Barnes trying to get in there. And does so! 3-1 to Watford. John Barnes gets his second of the day. Just getting there before George Wood and just getting it inside the post. Sims, it's a real battle out there now, but I think the Arsenal fans sense that their team could still do it. And they're certainly giving them all the encouragement. Davis with the cross coming in, Torbert! in by Paul Davis and Talbot making one of those runs of his from the midfield three of them all and Sherwood is beaten and Arsenal are truly back in it O'Shea battling with Blissett and Blissett might get the better of him does so in fact gets the ball back for Barnes there and what could have scored again the ball came off Robson in fact but Barnes will say I'm claiming a hat-trick Blissett did well here beating off the challenge of Danny O'Shea pulled it back there's Barnes with the shot and it just goes off Robson into the back of the net smashing game of football that so another win for Watford and despite criticism of their style of play it really is proving very effective in the first division I noticed their up and under style has earned them the nickname the wholesalers because they don't need any middlemen George Best is such sarcasm justified or is it sour grapes uh, actually I, I love it because I think uh, Graham Taylor is using his assets to the, to the maximum uh, terrific you know the, when balls are knocked up to the big fella, Jenkins or Blissett, you know, the other players know that they're not going to nod them back to midfield. So that they know they're going to be flicked on and they're getting on the end of them and making the most of them. See, Graham Taylor of Watford, for me, is the perfect manager. He doesn't go strutting around, putting people down, being aggressive. He quietly gets on with the job and produces results. And yet he's been criticised, or Bobby Robson's been criticised, for taking him on his backroom squad, the England backroom squad. I can't understand that, can you? No, I'm very impressed with him. He seems to me to be a very straightforward, honest manager. And I think a lovely thing about him was a few weeks ago when his team got walloped by Notts Forest, I think it was, it was. seven or eight, yeah. uh, he didn't go around slagging his players off and saying they're no good and they can't do this and they can't do that. He just said, well, I accept things like that will happen on a bad day and let's get on and play, look forward to the next game.